Could a row over the South China Sea erupt into the next global conflict? It's one of the most hotly contested and lucrative regions in the world. And in July, a landmark ruling by an international tribunal in The Hague came down overwhelmingly in favor of claims by the Philippines and against the Chinese. But Beijing says it won't abide by the court's decision and refuses to scale back its economic and military presence in the area. Meanwhile, the United States has thrown its political and military weight behind China's neighbors. So are we on a road to war? And if so, which side is to blame? Joining me to discuss this from Beijing is Charles Liu, a senior fellow at the Peking University Center on China and Global Affairs and the founder of How Capital. And in the studio, Bonnie Glazer, a senior advisor for Asia and director of the China Power Project at the Center for Strategic and International Studies in Washington, DC. Thank you both for joining me in the arena. Charles, China lost a case at the International Tribunal, and yet the Chinese government refuses to accept that decision. For years, China has criticized the U.S. for violating international law in places like Iraq and Libya. And yet it's now China that seems to be very brazenly defying international law over the South China Sea. I, I think you, you are doing exactly what much of Western press has done in describing it as international law and describing it as international tribunal. It's an arbitration tribunal. Normally, arbitration takes two parties. When one party goes in and projects its case, it's not an arbitration. It is a one-sided decision. Let me bring in Bonnie Glazer. Charles says it's not international law, therefore it's international law is not being defined. Well, under the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea, which of course China was uh, part of the negotiations from the very beginning and is a signatory to, the, to UNCLOS, um, it's quite clear that there are cases in which an arbitration tribunal can be constituted, and if the other party does not participate, that is not necessary. And yes, the tribunal has the right to rule on jurisdiction, and then it has the right to, to make a decision, uh, hear the arguments, and finally, it's quite clear under UNCLOSE. This is legally binding on both parties, and in this case on China and the Philippines. There are limitations on what the tribunal can address, and the question is whether or not the tribunal has the right to address the issues okay. which were being addressed. But it did clearly come out against the Chinese position, and isn't that a reflection of the wider politics of the region, which is that China is pretty isolated out there on this issue of the South China Sea, the Vietnam, the Philippines, Malaysia, I don't Brunei, think, I they're don't all think upset so. with I you. Don't, I don't think so. Oh, not at all. I don't think so. Um, uh, in fact, after the APEC meeting, it was the U.S., Japan, and Australia which has started uh, ranting and raving about South China Sea. None of the ASEAN countries said a word. Uh, it, the new president of the Philippines is now talking seriously about bilateral, bilateral solutions to the issue between the Philippines and China, and not pressing what was being pressed by the previous administration. Uh, we, we have a situation where the region, and, and really every country in the region, even non-claimants, um, and countries outside of the region, Japan, Australia, India, the United States, are quite concerned about whether we're going to have a rules-based order that includes the South China Sea. So if international law does not provide the basis for behavior, then we will have chaos but, but and Bonnie, anarchy. If, if the Philippines says that, fine. Um, how does the United States have any credibility to say that, given the United States hasn't ratified the UN Convention on the Law of the Sea? Absolutely, absolutely, but the United States absolutely. Should not only that, ratified. the United States. Okay, well, Bonnie's saying it should ratify, but you would accept they haven't ratified no. it right now, so it leaves them with a little bit of a credibility problem when they're. The trying United to... States um, it is vulnerable to being charged with being hypocritical, but having said that, it abides by UNCLOS's customary law. Do you worry about confrontation down the line, military confrontation? I believe that the United States. I don't. States I don't China worry about do that at all. To have a military. Charles, you don't. You say you don't worry about that. A, a new Pew you, poll shows six in ten Chinese worry about territorial arguments turning into war. No, I don't worry about that in South China Sea. Uh, I think the situation in East China Sea is somewhat more uh, complicated. The, the relationship with Japan. Um, but in terms of South China Sea, the attempt has been on a bilateral basis with the Philippines, with Malaysia, 
and also now with Vietnam. The whole reason the Philippines went to the tribunal was because they couldn't get any bilateral deal done and China won't negotiate with ASEAN as a whole. So, you know, haven't you brought this on yourselves? Hasn't the Chinese government brought this on China? Why should China negotiate with ASEAN as a whole? Why should it? Because, many because countries if you negotiate in ASEAN with those countries involved. individually, China negotiating with Brunei is not really a fair fight, Charles, some might say. No, I don't think China has been in the habit of pushing countries around like some others. Um, and the Chinese would not like to see the global policemen come into their waters and try to do what they have done. These are not leading Chinese waters, these are international waters. They're not. There's an enormous We're amount of trade. We're talking about South China Sea. Over $5 trillion of trade goes through these waters. The Japanese Absolutely. are dependent it's, it's, on them for It's energy. wonderful. There's never been any problem with the passage of international waters in South China Sea until oh, yes, military, military militarization ships, began. Freedom of navigation Bonnie, let me put this point to you. Challenged. You talk about them being international waters. When the Chinese foreign minister says, as he did to Al Jazeera in an interview earlier this year, that it's the United States, not China, that is militarizing that part of the world, what's your response to that? Well, first I would say that the United States has been militarily present uh, in Pacific waters uh, all it, it, for uh, hundreds of years, so this is not new. Uh, the United States sails all over the world. Hundreds of years. It's a global uh, navy. So the goal of the United States is simply to preserve peace and stability. Come on. Instead of one nuclear carrier group, now there are two. And the additional uh, bombers an and stealth fighters and the latest were being put in. Uh, and why two nuclear carriers to have exercises there? And the new and China's Air Force uh, jet fighters with being Russia sent in there. the South China Sea. Every country has the right to uh, sail in those waters. U.S. Sure. doesn't object to China being there. Sure. Why does China object to the United States being there? No, but who is doing the militarization? Who's increasing the military presence 10,000 miles away from their home territory? Bonnie, I don't see okay China with, doing Bonnie, that. Bonnie, would to you the be United okay with States? a Chinese carrier? carrying out exercise off the coast of the U.S. if it requested I, by a, a Latin American country. I welcome the Chinese Navy to sail in international waters anywhere according to the Convention the Law of the Sea. And the Chinese do, on occasion, come close to U.S. territory. Military exercises. Military exercises are very different from a friendly visit by a naval vessel. And just on the U.S.-China relationship, let me ask you both, is it going to get better or worse going forward? So my view is that it will get both better and worse. There are areas that the U.S. and China have convergent interests where we can cooperate. There are areas where we have friction, where we have to manage them. And there will be difficult issues going forward, and South China Sea is one of those. Charles, better or worse going forward, U.S.-China relations? Oh, Bonnie's absolutely right. In some areas, it'll get better. Some areas, it'll get worse. But I don't think it would lead to anything military, because anything militarily would actually destroy both countries. We'll have to leave it there. Thank you both for joining me in the arena. That's our show. Upfront, we'll be back next week.